A very good evening and welcome to this edition of the Fourth Estate on this 10th day of April 2016. My name is Charles Mongu Shampagi and on the Fourth Estate tonight, a show we've been trying to do since elections will be brought to you tonight. But of course, let me start with uh, making some general comments on uh, some of the major events that have been uh, making the headlines over the week. And one of the most saddening is the story of the breakdown of the only teletherapy machine at Mulago Cancer Institute, uh, which has broken down and uh, it attends to 44,000 people per year. At least that was the number for last year. And government doesn't have the money. But we understand now that um, from a press conference that was called earlier today by the Minister for Health, um, a machine was procured three years ago. The government of Uganda was supposed to build a bunker to house that machine, and that bunker hasn't been built. Uh, from what we understand, the bunker requires about 31 billion shillings to build, and only then can we have the machine come into the country. Even if people were working day and night to build the bunker, it would take a minimum of six months to have it completed for the machine to be there. But this is happening at a time when the country is experiencing an ever-increasing number of cancer patients. And from what we had, um, uh, from, from what we had uh, regional uh, countries from the neighboring areas of South Sudan, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Rwanda, and elsewhere in Eastern uh, Kenya, rather Western Kenya, are coming to Uganda to get treatment. Let me introduce my colleagues and our guest is in a very good place to also comment about that, but as well as comment about the politics of this country uh, since elections and what next after the elections. Let me introduce Ona Pito Ekomoloit. Very nice to have you. Good evening, viewers, and good evening, Charles. We have, uh, <coughs> let me jump to my colleague, Ivan Okuda. Ivan, very nice to have you. Thank you, Charles. Good evening, Uganda. And of course, the cameras have already betrayed me. Our guest tonight, a retired colonel, Dr. Kiza Beseje. He ran as president, has been, was, or is the founding leader of the Forum for Democratic Change, and has earned himself a new reputation. Either he is incarcerated in his house, or at Nagalama, or somewhere else. Dr. Bessie, very nice to have you. A pleasure, and nice that it could be done at last. Um, <laughs> very good not evening to all not the... Not like the, <laughs> the other time. <laughs> yes, a very good evening to all the viewers out there. Uh, let me start with you from... Um, the profession that you trained in, the medical profession, and all this controversy, and I mean talk about the breakdown of the tele uh, teletherapy machine at Mulago Hospital. You must have been following the debate and the reporting about it. Um, what's your take on that? Let me start from there. Well, you see, uh, frankly, the whole healthcare system is broken. It's not just a machine. It's the whole system. It's comprehensively broken. Um, <clears throat> right from where a patient gets into touch with uh, a healthcare worker, whether it's at the um, health center one or whatever place, a health care worker interacts with a patient, you find there is a problem right there. They will not maybe have even a stationary on which to scribble, you know, your notes on your condition. Mm. So patients have to come with their own stationary so that they can write what is wrong with them. Mm. And so you find that there is no, there are no medical records because normally there would be medical records kept by the health facility that provides uh, the regular health care to a patient. And that um, problem then continues. First, because there are very many patients compared to health workers, a health worker spends very little time looking at a patient. Mm. And in most cases, they just listen to a few of the complaints and scribble. Um, what the treatment will be. Mm. If you are complaining of fever, which in our local language is the same name as malaria, then they will not do yes. You just scribble mm. some treatment for malaria or whatever and give you um, a prescription for you to go and 
purchase and look for for the medicine mm. hardly any investigations you know and not because you know we don't have people who are trained to do all these things but as i have said the whole system is broken the ethical conduct of the of the of the um, of the profession is also broken you've seen um, patients you know there was a, st a situation i was uh, hearing about in Jinja, where this uh, man came with his wife who needed a cesarean section mm. in a government hospital, and they insisted that he brings three hundred thousand shillings. Otherwise, they won't touch uh, the, 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 the mother, the, the mother, the expectant mother. Mm. And uh, the, the man did not have the money. Ran around. I think it was a weekend, mm. looking to borrow. By the time he came back, the wife was dead. And, and there are many of such cases. So when you go to the upper end of where you need specialized treatment, you know, where you need specialized investigations, that is a total nightmare. Because now, in fact, even where you find that they are, uh, some of this equipment is working in Mulago, maybe scans and things like that, uh, because the queue is very long, mm. you will not get in unless you pay. Mm. <laughs> Almost the same amount as when you are paying uh, in a private yes. facility. I, if you take it a little further, healthcare service delivery, especially in countries like that have succeeded um, extremely, like India, like South Africa, is largely, even neighboring Kenya, is outside the control of government. And we have had exponential growth in private healthcare delivery in this country. Why aren't the people investing in the private sector investing in some of the things? 44,000 uh, patients checking in every year is by, n by any measure a very large number that would even uh, financially make business sense. Yes, first of all, understand that, um, you know, the cost of, you know, the, the, the investment is high. It's mm. not a small amount of money. If you need a machine that requires a million dollars, how many people will mm. uh, afford that amount of money in a health institution, you know? Um, and um, uh, it, it also, uh, at the end of the day, relates, I think, to the whole policy of the, of the health care system. Because you see in those areas, you're also talking about the affordability of those who are seeking care. Now, if you have, for example, health insurance, mm. where, um, you know, whoever has an insurance and they could have universal coverage of insurance, that you are able to access uh, whatever health care you need, then um, uh, health providers can invest in the comfort that they will get um, you know, uh, an, 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 uh, an estimatable uh, return. But here... Guaranteed by the yes, investment. Yes, yes, yes. But by, here, by the, by the here, the here you are not just talking about those 44,000 that uh, it's, it's a big market. It's not a market because mm -hmm. they don't have money. Mm -hmm. So even if you invest in a private <laughs> outfit that can do what, uh, this, give them the service they need, they won't afford it. Mm. Uh, so this is so we need to talk about financing healthcare. There must be a, a you know a, a policy that affords citizens to finance healthcare. And we've been talking about health insurance, health you know, uh, he, he, health insurance for citizens. It works, um, but again, you need a, a rob, you need robust systems. Uh, that that will manage it. Mm. It, it. It will be a nightmare if you introduce it even in a situation like Uganda where actually uh, public, you know, institutions are dysfunctional. Mm. <laughs> because it, it, let's write mm. to Honor because he's the biggest advocate of uh, uh, private investment in yeah. almost everything. Yeah. Now, now you have a situation mm. where the only machine in the country mm. actually People who know it, Ivan Okuda was at the press conference mm. earlier this morning uh, at, the, at the Cancer Institute at Mulago. Even there, this is a machine that came into the country 21 years ago. Mm. 
and a lot of technological advances have happened over the period, but which we'll put to the professional here, to the doctor later, is that what explains possibly the increasing, uh, the, 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 the increase in cancer cases? What, is, what explains that, but from the private sector perspective? Well, first of all, I must uh, welcome Dr. Vesige from the siege and congratulate him for a well-fought fight in the, in the arena where he was trying to expound his own theory of how to solve Uganda's health care. And I think he got into a lot of problems over it in Abima and other places. Look, I totally agree that, yes, it's very costly to invest in such a machine. I don't know exactly the cost. I don't know what's the name of the machine. But I also know that millions of dollars are being plowed into the Ugandan public health system. But unfortunately, it does not deliver the expected result, including having that machine function as it should be. So my departure would be, yes, even with the current uh, public money, and I know even Dr. Besige believes that you, you can put more public money into health and it will work. I don't believe it will work. Or you can put a lot of money and, and it will Put just more money into mm -hmm. public health, but also remove the control of that money from the hands of the civil servant. Give it to a contracted management. Because there are tested systems in managing healthcare in other countries, so we wouldn't, we wouldn't be really inventing the wheel. So the current billions or trillions <coughs> budgeted for health is not perhaps too little. Mm. The problem is how it is managed. That's the real problem. So you can throw in a lot of money and it will just disappear yes. down a bottom. So for thing. me, I want to give public money to private management. Okay. But that's, you see on the Peter, you still need the public institution that interfaces with the private, mm -hmm. uh, you know, institutions. And in fact, where you have a private, sort of a privatized system, you need a very robust public institution that... Um, manages and regulates and controls and mm -hmm. and indeed um, um, ac gets accountability of mm -hmm. all the funds that go into all these systems if you don't have that mm -hmm. then you are so we cannot run away to ha from having an effective uh, you know government system mm -hmm. that is that is that is the, the, the starting point of course investment is critical and you know Again, we are investing far less than what uh, we need to invest for the kind of population that we have. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, uh, you know, uh, I think the World Health uh, recommendation has been that uh, countries should invest uh, a minimum of 15%. The Abuja Declaration, 2001. Yes, 15%. Mm. Uh, here, I think the highest it has gone was slightly less than 9%, mm. the highest. Otherwise, previously it was even 3%, mm. 4%. Uh, so the investment itself is, is, is a serious problem, and we must, uh, we must put in money. Ivan, what yes. was the minister's explanation about the breakdown of the machine? Uh, it, it, the, the coincidence is that mm. the machine decides to break down, a week after, I mean, during the same week, as President Museveni attempted to do a magufuli by uh, springing a surprise <laughs> on the Mulago medical workers <laughs> with a visit. And it also breaks down at a time when the NRM is celebrating um, the court victory. Yes, and, and, and the, the, the overall victory, actually. Yes, yes. And, and that, of course, played into the, Steady progress. Um, you know, the social media uh, uh, sentiment. But, of course, the minister's explanation, like many other government officials, is to essentially try to get a lotion and smear a wound and try to paint a good picture. Um, he, for example, threw around statistics. Um, the last three financial years, for example, the funding for the health sector has been growing. Um, 2012, 2013, at about 850 billion. That went down to up to about 940 billion. The next financial year, now you're talking about yeah, one trillion. In the percentage terms, it mm. wasn't. Yes. yes. In percentage terms, there's no... It's, it's, yeah. it's small, it's very, quite small. Mm. And, um, of course, you get the impression that um, the country is paying keen attention, specifically to cancer as um, a threat. You're talking about 44,000 people dying uh, every single year. The projection is, in the next 7 to 10 years, we shall have, at any one time, 300,000 Ugandans suffering from cancer. 
and it's cutting across the risk factors are going up um, it's no longer an issue for the old the young and old are uh, falling asleep alike but the level of investment vis-a-vis uh, -vis the the magnitude of the threat uh, don't seem to, 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 to connect the bank requires 30 billion shillings so far the Ministry of Finance has advanced just 9 billion shillings so the Minister of Health is on its knees begging for another 21 billion shillings to be able to even have that bank at earliest six months, worst case scenario, one year. Mm. And the procurement process hasn't even um, been concluded. So... But do you, did you get the impression from the minister that there was actual thinking about fixing this problem before mm. it broke down to embarrass everybody? Because I the press conference uh, called, on, uh, called mm. on a Sunday was called because there was a crisis and everybody was talking about it on social media, yes. on international media, mm -hmm. and it, it's, uh, it's embarrassing the country. I, I want to think they've been working because um, 325,000 euros was paid for the Cobalt 60 machine. Uh, but it, of course, because of regulations by the International Atomic Energy Center, it cannot, for example, be shipped in before you have the bunker where mm -hmm. it's going to be anchored and the but country... The, three, the, the, the money was paid three years ago. Yes, yes. for the machine, but not yes. for the banker. Yes, but that's mm. the dysfunctionality of the whole thing. Mm. But I think How the do you pay for something mm. you don't know where it is going? Mm. The challenge with the whole healthcare system is beyond funding. You, in as much as you have, for example, cancer funding. Last year, the Uganda Cancer Institute got a vote. Um, in other words, it no longer has to depend on the Ministry of Health or Mulago Hospital budget. It gets its money directly from Minister of Finance. Um, and there's been tremendous increase in the last four or five yes, they, they financial also have years. They a better uh, structure to yeah. work in, which was launched not long ago. Yes. yes. But you see, it, it's a multiplicity of factors that have to be, to be functioning. You, for example, have an increase in, um, in, in um, funding for the Uganda Cancer Institute, but the same is not true with um, staffing. I've Uganda staffing levels, you're talking about World Health, Organi World Health Organization recommendation is one patient to, I mean one doctor for a, a thousand patients, ours is one, the ratio is one to 28,000. If you're talking about the, rural, uh, the urban areas, rural areas we're talking of one doctor attending to 100,000 patients. 100, it is 100,000 patients. These are a statistics that you can verify. It is appalling. The situation, if you go to the funding, uh, the staffing levels, the number of graduates uh, per year, about 300 people graduate from medical school, 70% going to um, service outside the country, 20% going to research and administration, and just 10% go into, into the real, yes, mm -hmm. providing the medical uh, assistance. And this is the same country where 286 specialists were recommended to go to Trinidad and Tobago. Mm. The same country which is number 149 in terms of healthcare in the whole world. That is how bad we are. And so the level of decision making at the level of creating synergy between civil service competence and, um, and, and people really getting to work, uh, increasing the staffing levels, and then also the budget allocation, we're still really uh, Look, and that's which has below the pit. That all multiplicity of problems, I summarize in the fact that someone needs to lose sleep, to lose sleep over this issue. Mm. Someone must actually go to bed worried. I doubt that there's someone who loses sleep even if we throw a lot of money at this problem, as has often been recommended, and it's a popular notion in politics, you need a system whereby somebody is worried about the problem. And normally, what, that's where private sector comes in, because it's driven by margins. Somebody is worried about what will I get, and he whips others who are below that person to do what they should do. Mm. And even if you have a government that is committed, magufuli scenario of this world, I don't think it's sustainable. Because often, government is working during daytime. Private sector works 24 hours. Mm. So I still believe we need to borrow, yes, have a strong public policy, a strong ministry, but the delivery in these hospitals must be taken out of bureaucrats who have nothing to lose. Mm. Ivan is saying but, most but people are unfortunately going to research. You see a lot of post vehicles being bought in for Ministry of Health, and this has been going on for decades. Okay. We need to take it, There was a monitoring system introduced by State House. It also seems not to have delivered. Mm. So, so somehow, why somehow 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 I think for me, I'm, I'm, I'm mm. afraid we, mm. uh, we, we started with this because mm. it's one of uh, it's a, a, an issue that concerns a lot of Ugandans. Mm. 
outside of the political discussions and others. So we had to start with the, that machine. It's been the most um, trending topic of discussion over the last one week, apart from uh, the reappearance of uh, Christopher Aine. Uh, I would like us to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll go to talk to Dr. Uh, his days in uh, under house arrest. It wasn't house arrest because the police never said said they never arrested you. <laughs> you had We're only monitoring you. <laughs> Just monitoring you, as uh, Jim always mm. said. We'll go into that discussion after a short commercial break. We'll be right back. You're still watching the Fourth Estate, and our guest tonight is retired Colonel Dr. Kiza Besige, former presidential candidate of the Forum for Democratic Change. He was the founding president of the FDC. Dr. Besige, let's return to the issue of the politics. You believe you won the February 18th election, do you? You know, even what we were talking about earlier is the issue of politics. Yes. Mm -hmm. It starts with elections. And as long as you have a situation where a bad performer will still be assured of being elected, well, not elected, but mm. staying in office, not accounting for the chaos that uh, is under his administration, that's what happens. So did you win so, the election? Yes, I am completely persuaded, convinced, I mean, I'm, I'm, that uh, we won the elections. Uh, and uh, this is not uh, simply speculative. Uh, it is with uh, uh, some hard facts and evidence. And this is why we have uh, been uh, demanding that there should be an independent audit because I've heard some people saying, if you have facts, give them to us. Yes, I'm ready to give facts okay. out. But we would like it is rather than just having a casual discussion in the social media on the veracity or otherwise of what we have, we would like to subject it to proper structured scrutiny so that at, not only is there, the, the, does the outcome be, be, be just uh, people indeed agreeing that we won and there is nothing, but that whoever won then can be conferred uh, proper legitimacy and, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and take office with it. Okay, let's, 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 let's go um, uh, a little bit more systematically than the social media discussion. If you believe you won, what percentage did you score? Well, I have already said that we scored about 52%. Mm. Uh, now, f first of all, let me be clear that we don't have our own results from 28,010 polling stations where elections took place. And we have, we can discuss why we don't have all the results. But you see, you don't need all the results. How much results do you, you have? You don't need all the results to have a very good idea about what you got. Yes. Because, even, even because the Electoral Commission declared the results because less than yes. 1,700. Yes, be because uh, in fact opinion polls, which are uh, relied on in, uh, in most areas, if it's properly done, they, are, they use a very, very small sample. Mm. You know, maybe in Uganda, I think a, a large poll would take account of 3,000 people. Even 1,000. 3,000 would be a very large poll. Yes. You know, so uh, if we have results from millions of people, from, you know, tens of thousands of polling, tens of, ten, you know, more than 10,000 polling stations scattered across the country, then quite obviously, scientifically, uh, you can come to a very precise conclusion of what uh, the outcome of the election was. But, uh, so but, but beyond uh, that, beyond, yes. that, beyond what we believe we, we have arising out of such, uh, uh, you know, a, a statistical kind of uh, evaluation, we can 
as a country evaluate physically what yes. uh, we can we can audit. I, I, hear, the, I, the hear, you, I hear you. I hear you. And on get that. The, the actual result. You said you have a substantial number of results. Can you give a number? How many results do you have out of twenty eight thousand? Yes, 000, yes, yes, yes. Certainly, we have uh, close to twenty thousand polling station, um, and that is you know way way. Um, a lot of and, and, and these are from declaration results forms given to you by the electoral commission no 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 mm. by our agents yes but collected from the electoral commission of course yes. uh, co but collected from the presiding officer they are results yes. of the electoral commission okay that, that, that's what i wanted to get yeah. the results of the electoral commission that give you that victory um what do you think in the current circumstances without the audit you are going to do to be able to realize? No, you see, first of all, uh, the legal system is, uh, again, a very faulty system as far as election results are concerned. And I think, indeed, the Chief Justice in the petition that was filed by the Honorable Mama Mbawazi mentioned it, that the petition process is uh, is not uh, requires reform because that is the only legal avenue presently within the constitution through which you can challenge the election outcome and uh, get um, a different uh, result from what the electoral commission says but first it is faulty because a candidate is only given 10 days mm in which to assemble evidence all over the country, 281 constituencies, and the test has now been uh, positively made by the court that it has to be a quantitative test. So not only must you show that um, there were predict ballot papers stuffed in the boxes, you must establish to what extent exactly. Not only must you establish that, you know, uh, people were killed my supporters were killed in this election and that affected the result. If you say 10 were killed, they will say those are 10 votes. Mm. So you need to kill thousands upon thousands if they are to have substantial effect, which is a ridiculous thing, obviously. But that is the standard in, that you have to prove within 10 days uh, after election to gather evidence to achieve that standard. Ridiculous. Lastly, you have uh, 30 days for the court in which to determine the case. Mm. 30 days including the time where the respondents, the people who uh, uh, you are petitioning against, the electoral commission, uh, the candidates who have uh, caused problems in the elections, they are supposed also to you. It's within 30 days that they have to respond mm. to the petition you have filed. And then the petition would, ha would be heard uh, and argued in court, and then there would be time for writing results, all in 30 days. It's ridiculous. So if you want, for example, to have a recount of, uh, you know, a thousand polling stations, and you have good reasons why they should be recount, uh, uh, there should be that recount, the court will simply say, but where shall we get the time from? So the, the legal process is for itself. In, our, in my case, of course, I was, we were not even uh, uh, given the opportunity to try to see whether we could assemble evidence and satisfy this legal process. Well, the because people argue and say that you had made a decision mm -hmm. uh, prior to 2011 that you would not go to the court process. You see, that is, the people who argue, who make those arguments uh, are, are simply hiding from the truth. Because even if I did not want to go to court, it does not give you a license to arrest me and detain me because that is a, my constitutional right to petition the outcome of the elections. Mm. And not only to cripple me as a candidate, but also to cripple our institution. The headquarters of FDC was taken over by police. For three weeks, it was in the hands of the police. Mark, you were taken out of office in a meeting at the headquarters when results had just started coming in. Uh, our offices in various parts of the country were raided. 
hundreds of our support of our leaders and agents were arrested. So we had a comprehensive attempt at dismantling and disabling our ability to, uh, in a, 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 a reasonable way, assemble a petition, mm -hmm. if we wanted to. And I'm not saying that if we had the opportunity, that even then we would. No, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that. But it's... You should have been afforded the opportunity yes, to do that. Yes, the opportunity should be there. Mm. It, it is provided by the Constitution. And uh, if you cripple it, you are directly violating the Constitution. Th this and that is, that is what happened. So we have a situation where the Constitution has been violated in a significant manner relating to the election of 2016. There the, are the people who argue and say that, um, how could you claim victory for the presidential race and yet you did not perform as a party you, you performed poorly in the other again, elections again, for parliament see, for local again, councils again that is uh, you know uh, uh, an argument of people evading the truth because okay mr chibundu gave me 35 percent mm -hmm. but in the parliament we have 10 percent of mps so why if you think that uh, the, 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 the votes of the, of the presidency must have some relevance to, to those. Uh, why don't I have 30 percent of, why don't, doesn't FDC have 30 percent of MPs? You see, there are many factors. And um, uh, one of the major factors uh, is, for example, uh, the, the fear candidates have present themselves. This is a very, very real thing. You know, M many candidates who are NRM candidates don't believe in NRM. They would, ha they would have mm, preferred to stand on other, but the only place where they can stand and, and know that they will not be molested, that they, you know, they, they will have some money to, to, to use in elections and so on, is by standing in the, in the so uh, mark you in this election, the nomination fee for a member of parliament was in the dying moments towards the nomination. But changed but from 200,000 to, to 3 million. million. Yes. All these are 3 million for people who are on the opposition, who are denied all opportunities and so on. It's not a small but, but, thing. But it, it so is, there are many factors. I'm just telling you there are many factors. I, I hear you on the factors and I want my colleagues to come in. It would make your case different if you had made significant inroads into other elective positions, if you have not been able to, fi uh, to field candidates um, in all available constituencies for parliament, for example, if you ha only have a small portion of your supporters, I, I mean of uh, FDC supporters and opposition-leaning supporters generally standing for local council elections, then does it in a way provide ammunition to people who say, your, co no, your claims no, that you want to it would provide ammunition to people who are not willing to examine the situation um, objectively because in fact you had this week state house looking for money they spent on the presidency they have taken 70 billion even when we are talking about uh, Harith not having a machine to save Ugandans state house has taken 70 billion for these two months that are remaining because all the money was used in the elections you know so we are talking about a situation where this is not an election for heaven's sake i've been saying this over and over but some people don't get it we are not talking about an election where nrm is not a party it's the state it uses everything of the state we are contesting against the DSOs, the GSOs, the uh, RDCs, the what, all those are mm. factors that affect the, the, the election. If you want, you know, to, 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 to understand uh, uh, how pervasive the whole situation is, you know, many of our candidates, you know, uh, you, you saw what was happening even in this petition, witnesses being arrested. Mm. What do you think happens actually on the ground um, in, 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 the, in the campaign. Let me tell you, many, many people had their results changed 
at the tally center, especially in the local government elections. Not, you find not only the, was the person declared even a number two, you find a number three was Imagine declared. Imagine the yes. winner. And it, it is now incumbent upon these poor people to go and petition if they want that to change. Okay. So there are many, many problems. Let, let me bring in my colleagues on this. Uh, let me start with you, uh, Ona. You contested an election, you won, you lost, an you, you lost another election, and, and, and you worked closely with the president for some time. Th th there is a whole question about, a, a whole debate about the spread of especially the opposition's reach in a country like Uganda, and especially the discussion, the, the context in which we're having this discussion. Well, Charles, I don't want to go there so much. I want to start from uh, really try to take on uh, and understand some of Dr. Besige's dilemma. One, I, I will repeat my congratulations to him for really a uh, well-fought fight. I think uh, during the campaigns, there was a lot of uh, perception that maybe this was going to be the closest election ever. The crowds seemed energized on both sides. And he has been very tenacious. I think many people recognize that they wouldn't really stand in his shoes. But unfortunately, that's almost where my sympathy for Dr. Bessie ends. Because everything he's saying now, he said it before the election. So how then do you go into an election whose outcome you know? <laughs> mm. And that really, it, it, of course he added a caveat. No, but do you, no, no, do yes, you agree Lord. with them? Do you agree no, with what I said? Look, because that is what is important. Then well, we I don't have to agree. We I'm, with I'm, an, I'm an analyst. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm a commentator. Yes, yes, but so, so what I'm saying, <laughs> to your credit, you gave a caveat that this time there would be defiance. Regardless of what the state will do, all the things you're enumerating now, you already say the state will do, but you say it was going to be defied. And maybe people who voted for you actually believed that the defiance would pay off. But somehow, this defiance fizzled. And it did. No, it did no, not no, fizzle. It, again, <laughs> again, you, you see, you no, are, because you don't argue from the point of view mm -hmm. of saying that what Mr. Chibundu announced is the result of this. No, 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 I'm, ju I'm just saying. Because that we are contesting. The reaction mm. of yes. your supporters. Because we were. Almost lends credence the argument of the, the M7 camp that they were not convinced that they won. That's why they did not come out mm. the way you had predicted they would come out. The, the kind of crowds you are enjoying across the country, assuming those crowds came out across the country to say no, Mm. Which police force would have managed to respond to those crowds? It seems your supporters then actually genuinely were not sure that you actually won. It, it, and it, somehow they, they sat back, you are taken alone, you so are which isolated. One is, which one we were sure? Because even <laughs> the 60% win of Mr. Mm. Museveni, did you see any jubilation well, anywhere? For them, well, yeah. they, they were there, there were somebody <laughs> rented, rented. <laughs> there was somebody defending their victory so they could afford to sit at home. But, but also, I think in terms of PR campaign, you had a wonderful PR across the world. There was this perception that you had been robbed. But somehow, these results you are now unleashing, the 52% of whatever it is. You never mentioned it All that at that critical juncture. People wanted some numbers to say, well, 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 where I, is the evidence I, of the I, 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 I or at least that, where is the I, number? I, I think on that he's explained and uh, the, the FDC I think has been explaining, mm. Mm. they were disabled from being able to do that, to, to announce that. Okay, I, if I think they have the just discovered the yes. number belated, let's, uh, let's uh, understand. If I could have uh, Ivan Okoda make a quick comment before you take a break. How do you have this discussion when, like uh, Museven said yesterday at his victory party, mm. He said, uh, how can you say you are robbed at the presidency, you are robbed at parliament, you are robbed at local government? Mm. I, the other numbers, are they important and actually even for the protection of the vote at the grassroots level? Mm. And did FDC fail in that area, would you say? I think, of course, the numbers are also important. But they, I think in, you, you're in a country where it's essentially an individual system. The constituencies where you have overwhelming victory for NRM candidates and overwhelming victory for Dr. Besige those constituencies are there. And the, the other round is true. There are constituencies where you have overwhelming victory for FDC candidates at the parliamentary level and um, victory from seven. So, I, th so the I hang of individual merit is still... Yes, it's, it's, mm. it's, still, it's still potent. But I think also, um, in as much as I sympathize with uh, you know, the fact that we, we're in an abnormal situation, 
where you your candidate running against an established system, the security, the civil service are all tuned to, um, and even the electoral commission, the whole set apparatus really comes down on you. I think also on that on that part, the opposition also needs to do some soul searching. Surely, if since 2001, this is the fourth election we've had, we're really reading from the same script. Mm. We've talked, for example, about electoral reforms. I remember the talk show that you, the debate that you hosted between Dr. and uh, uh, General Mugesha Mundu, and Dr. persistently uh, asked Mundu, do you subscribe to the resolution of the Citizens' Compact on free and fair elections, that we shall not have elections without reforms? And then they ranged on that, and went into this same election that from 2001 we've been saying has fundamental flaws. So in other words, you are submitting yourself to a race where your hands are tied, and your opponent is saying, let's run. And then you expect some magic along the way, Possibly the spectators will come in and, in this case, the, <laughs> the voters, mm -hmm. and say, this is against this and this is injustice, uh, shall not, we shall not um, mm -hmm. entertain it. But forgetting that the umpire in that race is for the person who has already handcuffed you, and all the appellate systems in that race have been corrupted so much as to, uh, to, to disfavor you. So uh, I think at that level, the opposition also has some soul searching to do. Uh, no, but, but if you could respond to those. Charles, uh, yes. Charles. Hmm. And I hope that really our viewers will you know, examine this very carefully. What we are dealing with mm. is a military regime. What we are dealing with, and you know, it's not, it's not uh, an accident that no leader has ever handed over power peacefully to another leader. Every leader that has come to State House came by means of their guns, you know, bombing their way into State House. Now, the way they keep themselves there is largely by the same means, causing fear to everybody. And this is why earlier on we are talking about the, you know, the decay of the institutions. It's related to that. So, even if you actually made those reforms you are talking about, mm. it's reforming the law. Even the laws that are there now, they are not being mm. observed. Mm. In fact, one of the constant findings of all the petitions now is that the election was not conducted in accordance with the law. Mm. So even the laws that are there are not being observed. Even if you make reforms, and change their laws, they will not be observed. Even if these judges, poor judges, <laughs> if, if they had uh, uh, ruled to annul the election, they would not, that, that would not have been observed. And I think they knew it. <laughs> so <laughs> so, so mm. let me tell you, so what, are, what do we need to do as a country? Two yes. things. One, the citizenry which uh, Onapito was talking about, must come to grips with this, that they are in captivity of those who hold the guns, that all of us are in captivity. That is the first stage, and that we must get ourselves out of this situation by our own actions and effort. This must be, because, you know, it, it must stop for people saying, you know, UFDC, UBSJ, this is not a BSJ, FDC affair. This is an entire citizen's affair. The, 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 the so we use our parties, yes, as an avenue to mobilize mm. and to get this information to every citizen in this country. And that's why even well knowing that we are in an election which is totally controlled, organized, and managed by one candidate, so, look, we yeah. use the opportunity that arises <laughs> to go down and get that information So that is the first thing that Doctor, we need. are you suggesting that, uh, not suggesting, or would you agree that the citizen let you down? Is that, are you saying so? Because you told you them see, this before see, the election. You see, you see again, and again, they didn't again, respond. again you, are, you are bringing it as if it is me they are letting that down. No. You, are, you are the leader. No. no yes, I'm, yes I'm, I'm, I was the candidate. But let me mm. tell you. So it's a process. Liberation is a process. Mm. It does not happen instantaneously. Mm. And, uh, and, and we are making 
tremendous gains. Mm. Uh, it, it, people who saw what happened in the last election must have, if you are a dictator in this country, you must have every reason to worry. Because citizens have woken up. Citizens have known that unless they change their power dynamics, their situation will not change. They are poverty because they have no control over what happens to the wealth of this country. That's how it, this money is being, you know, dished and played about with when they are dying without any medical care. So they know that that will not change unless the power dynamics change, unless they have more influence in the country. They have woken up to that. Now, two, they have, uh, you, as you have been seeing, citizens are now determined to take matters in their hands. That's why they, they, in the last campaign, that's why they were collecting money for me. They, they were collecting money for you, doctor. But the question, yes. the, the, the big question is, is it a failure of mobilization? Why hasn't the message actually mm. registered and translated mm. into, it, because 52%, the constitution provides, the Presidential Elections Act provides, that to be declared a winner, you need 50 plus 1%. Plus so one vote, actually. Yes, plus one vote. <laughs> that means at 52% that you claim you won with, that's actually on a narrow. You have a significant portion of the population that is still comfortable with the situation as it is. No, but you see, again, f it's 52% of a rigged election. Mm. This is what you need to understand. <laughs> how, much the, uh, how much did candidate Mr. Seven have by your time? About 45. About 45. Yes, but and of, how much of a rigged election, yes. because that 45 mm. includes those, you know, <laughs> uh, those, those people you have <laughs> seen <laughs> pre-ticking those ballot papers. It includes the suppression of our own vote in a Kampala here, in Wakiso and so on. So it, it, you are talking about, yes, a narrow, uh, in, in, a, in, narrow in, a, in a narrow victory, mm. but in a com grossly, you know, uh, compromised uh, process. Okay, we need to take a quick mm. commercial break and when we come back, we'll be discussing, we'll be asking the doctor the question, what next? Welcome back to this last segment of the Fourth Estate. Unfortunately, we'll not be able to take your phone calls tonight. Uh, maybe we'll take them another Sunday. So, uh, sorry, Doctor, some of your, uh, some of the viewers would have wanted to put some questions to you or make some comments. Uh, we'll not be able uh, for some technical reason in the studio. But let me come back to you. You finished, the, we finished the election. You are confined at your house. It's only the other day that you let out. We attempted to come and interview you from your house. We couldn't uh, interview you or host the show from your house as we had uh, uh, planned to do. And that was, I think, the third week we're trying to do the interview with you. What next? You've had all these formations, you've had prayers, you've had a call for people to stay back home, and they don't seem to be working. What yes, you see, first of all, what has been happening, I think, is, a very, is one of the clearest form of uh, demonstration of a government th that acts with impunity which does not care what, whether, whether, what the law says, what uh, other people say, who, who say, you know, this is what we want and that's what will happen. Because as you know, what they have been doing is completely illegal and constitutional. They don't care about the constitution. Article 23 says if you detain anybody, you must detain them in a place authorized by law. Mm -hmm. They have, of course, been detaining me in my house. Mm and saying so, go back, we will not leave. You know, <laughs> you've, been, you've been seeing them on camera. Mm. You know, although they are leader, whom I don't know really what happened to him, Mr. Kayura, you know, he, even when something is stuck clear, there is evidence everywhere, he keeps on talking about uh, he is not under arrest and things like that. So they're acting completely with impunity. And of course, if you detain anybody, you must produce them before a court of law. I've been hearing them making accusations. You know that we are violent, we want to cause problems, whatever. Or, you see, a police can be only an accuser. If you accuse somebody, you cannot be a judge. You must take them before a judge. So that I defend myself and some neutral person says, yes, you police, you are right, or this man is right. They don't do that. Mm. So they detain me for 45 days, nothing, no, no, no production in any court of law. So we have a situation where we are dealing, this is why I say that we are in a captivity. You know, the law does not matter, all these things do not matter. Therefore, 
and I was telling you that one of the major achievements and what we seek for in an election, even which is as skewed, as rigged as, it, as, as the ones we've been going through, one of the things we achieve is information to the people. But two is to give people competencies to organize. Once they wake up and say, yes, we must do something, mm. that is only the first stage. The second stage is, is to know how to do it. So, so how, what do we do? We are all very unhappy with this. How do we do it in the face of these guns? Uh, you, you said this would not be an election about compliance, but yes, defiance. Yes, but I've been asking two questions. One, what do you mean when you say defiance? And two, how do you plan? Defiance, to defiance, defiance is the resistance of all, you know, unjust situations and just laws and just orders and just it's it's resistance against the injustice built in the system. And mark you, some people of course have been talking about defiance as if defiance in itself is a crime. They say as long as he has not renounced the defiance, we shall not leave him. Mm. No, defiance is to say I defy bad things. Just like resistance, you know, they, then they should first uh, abolish resistance, their national resistance. Resistance is the same thing, means the same thing as defiance. But yes, you see, uh, defiance, actually, we, uh, we, we, we prepared our people for defiance. And as I have told, told you, the first thing is knowledge that I am in this situation and I need to get out of this situation. And the way to get out of this situation is to defy. How do we defy? We must organize. How do we organize? Then you start going into how people can organize. And that's why we were, that's why we were you know, building that uh, Power 10 system all over the country. And that is a so major... So Power 10, uh, like they have argued, was that a system that was supposed to cause violence? And, no, no, no. Uh, defiance, chaos. as I have said, defiance yes. is not violence. Defiance is part of non-violent struggle, but it's a struggle. Make no mistake, it's a very uh, tough struggle. So how do you plan to execute that? So, uh, as I have said, the, the first thing we have achieved on, information and awakening of our people. Our people are alert and our people are resisting. Our people are strong, that's why. I, I talk to people and they're very dispirited. That no, 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 no. Four <laughs> times, for four times you have tried, you preach the same message. You see, again. And not again, been able to cross. Again, you see, it's not about me. Yes. It's it, about them. Everybody who says that. And that is what, that's one of the things we have. Because previously you would say, you know, we are praying for you. We are, we support you. Go ahead and fight for us. We have changed that. Now everybody knows they have, it's their fight. They all have to fight because they, we are in the same captivity. I'm only offering some kind of leadership, mm -hmm. but we are in the same captivity. So then what, what uh, we lacked, I think, to some extent also in this election was enough time to organize, which is, again, I think the reason it was deliberately cut down from uh, the four months originally to three months for the campaigns in the whole country. Mm. But as I have said, in spite of all those, uh, our people defied and we won. You see, this so is one when, thing. When the, they when defied and we won. Yes. And, when, and when, don't, when, don't when, think, when, you when know, you and, and, and where it, let me tell you, you know, don't think that uprooting people like Dr. Kionga, the Minister of Defense, uprooting uh, Brigadier Muwezi, uprooting, you know, these uh, uh, entrenched uh, military and so on, or paramilitary people. But, but, but in but, the same but, but way, the NRM is also yes, arguing that uprooting your opposition, uprooting, uprooting your, your people. Yes, 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 yes. So, l let me say this. Fair you know, deal. Yeah. No, uprooting our people, of course, is, as I have told you, is, is the easiest because you can even just announce a wrong thing and it will be up, 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 our people will simply have to go to court. And there are many petitions against the members of parliament and all the others. I, I can see Ivan is itching to say something, so maybe allow him to say something. Yes, yes. just in there. If, I mean, NRM lost about 20 ministers in this election, mm. and about 15 of those were really powerful in their own right. And FDC lost about 16 yes. powerful and members of parliament. Because the point Doctor was making in the, in the first uh, segment of the show was that um, even at the parliamentary level, you're talking of a very rough terrain. Yeah. And I'm thinking, if the likes of Jim Ways can lose, if the likes of Kahindo Tafide can lose, Jessica Lupo and all the big wigs in, uh, in NRM, isn't that then uh, watered down the argument that 
the system is so rough that you could not have so raised just, a substantial just number just of people. Before Dr. answers, let me also just then put my, my picture and you can answer. Uh, listening to you, it, it looks like you are saying that, yes, the election was uh, rigged as usual, though we won, but our people are awakened, and that was just a stage. So can one then say that, yes, the court has, has been influenced, as you would say, to say otherwise, the Electoral Commission has said otherwise. So let's just wait for 2026. Is that your position that we yeah, shall Quite obviously not. Quite obviously are not. Quite are obviously you, not. So we are not going to settle. You so see, no, say. no, 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 we can't. You see, because every day <laughs> is a very precious day. Every day that passes when our people are dying needlessly, when you have all these millions of people, of young people unemployed, are loitering around and desperate, when you have, uh, you know, uh, the students in the university restless because they cannot meet their uh, needs as students and so on and so forth. Every day is a very precious day. And we cannot, frankly, you know, say let's, it, can, it will be business as usual. Uh, you just steal. In fact, this case, not just steal. You, 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 you just, uh, you know, grab. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's it, because this was really a coup for all <laughs> intents and purposes. It's a coup. How do coups get carried out? The guns that are surrounding me surround every every situation, every every leader who is being overthrown. Uh, the, the, our victory is just in the process of being overthrown. It hasn't been total overthrown yet. <laughs> mm. We are still there. We are still going to struggle. Resisting. So yes, you, and you, you, there may not be a, a swearing in next month. Well, I wouldn't like to speculate about what will happen tomorrow, but uh, I mean, the situation is definitely uh, fluid. So uh, can you blame General Kaihura for keeping in your house when you talk like that? You see, they are, they you have see, to be worried. yes, I have. No, worried they must be. Mm. They should be worried because they are in the wrong place. They should be worried because they are swimming against the tide. So they have every reason to worry because uh, they, 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 they will lose power, you know. But that does not make them, uh, does not give them any license to act extra constitutionally, to act extrajudicially. Because yeah, now yeah, they would yeah. also argue that by you challenging the electoral outcome, the, which has been authenticated mm. by the Supreme Court, you're also acting unconstitutional. Let them so produce me in court. No, they, because they, that is the whole thing. They, they if, I, if I commit an offense, mm. I expect to be produced before a court of law. The, the counter you, can, you cannot just keep on yes. uh, locking me up and no, saying this think, man is... Yes, I think what I'm uh, saying is you vow to make Uganda ungovernable. And to defy the no, state. No, no. And, and that gives no, the state uh, and, you know, reason. Uh, defying, uh, no. Mm -hmm. We have uh, made it very clear that the defiance campaign will continue. And we have, it, it's legitimate. It's a legitimate campaign, the defiance campaign. You see, uh, tell me, what would be legitimate if, for example, tomorrow citizens decided that we are not going to send any food to Kampala? Mm. We who don't believe that the people in Kampala are doing a good job for us, we are not sending any food from the whole country. Mm. Would, would it be with, well within their rights? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's their Wouldn't it be a defiance campaign? Mm -hmm. Can it bring down a government? So legitimate actions of citizens mm. can bring down a government whether there is an election or not. If citizens are, dis are determined that we don't believe in this leadership. Power is about people obeying you. It's about people, you know, doing what you want them to do. And people can reject. And once they reject, you have no power. I am sorry, whether you have missiles, whether you have rockets, whether you have nuclear weapons, you will go down. You have no power. And I, this is what, where we are going. But, but I, I hear you on that. Have... But the people, there, there are also people who question and say, where is Dr. Kiza Besage the statesman? You said every day is a precious day. And you get out of Kasangati and you start moving and there is a procession and there is a standstill because between you, your vehicle and the police is a standoff, tear gas is thrown and people's lives get disrupted. And people are saying, would you do this differently? Would you, do you have some empathy? for these market women and men and people struggling to make 
to take out a living. First of all, why, why do you think they keep on coming to me, even when indeed they have experienced a lot of trauma from the brutal police, mm. which is of course acting uh, not in accordance with uh, what is expected of them. The police claims you mobilize them, you intoxicate them, you give them money. Intoxicate the, all those market people. And the whole town. The police has argued that. No, you them. see, you yes. see, frankly, Charles, I think we have reached a stage where the dictatorship is actually isolated. Because let me tell you, you know, whenever they pick me and take me to those police stations, I talk to these policemen. The policemen are even more disgruntled than the, the, those market people. They, they are also saying, we don't know when this thing will end. <laughs> I'm telling you this, and I'm sure they know it. I'm sure that the, these fellows know it. So we are, we are in a very, very, in fact, even when they were locking me at home, there were like three outfits that were guarding me. Mm. I'm sure all in a, a bid to check on each other. Mm. Mm. Because they know... Which outfits were these? All of the police, you know, mm. they have, there are many outfits in the police. Mm. Field force, I don't know what, there is this one. They, they are, they are so, uh, you know, it's, you see, the reason even when people know the... And, you know, those market people, you see, they, they don't only come. They come and give me fruits and give me food and give me money. And, and then they tear gas them. They lose their things, yes. But if I come back tomorrow, they come. Why? The government should be asking themselves. It's, and it's not about the love of me as a person. I would like to assure you about that. Mm. No. They are demonstrating. Mm. They are simply demonstrating. I have seen you. you you're very courageous. I've, I've seen you eat the fruits. They have given to you, yeah. and in a in, in a country where there's fear of poisoning and things like that, <laughs> I, I, I I I look at you and I wonder and say, <laughs> "Aren't you afraid that you could be poisoned?" You know, uh, well, first of all, a lot of things can happen to me which I have no control over. At the end of the day, it's God who protects me, I believe, and that's why I was. Happy to have had the chance to go and pray today mm. uh, in you, church. You pray that two churches. Well, I change. I pray every day, but mm. uh, today at least I had a fellowship with uh, other Ugandans. But um, you know, let me tell you this: uh, when you have popular support, the population will protect you. If there is mm. a bad guy mm. at the market who is giving me anything. I'm sure the majority of the people who are around there will say, oh, don't touch that. Mm. <laughs> you know? But they, they know each other. It's so, so can, we, so can we also assume that President Museveni's long stay in power is because people love him? No, 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 <laughs> no. no. I told you I how he do. came into power <laughs> and uh, what he uses to, to stay there. Now, to be, to be fair to him, you know, although he used guns and we were all in it, Although, although we used guns to come into power, we did so with popular support. It was uh, a, a people's war, if you like. But that's where it stopped once he came into power, you see. Because the whole idea why these people, and that's why now we, I'm very so, uncomfortable so with the you, with you are, You're also mm -hmm. waging a people's no. war without guns. Yes, it absolutely. Means the fact that you have people's war has not yet succeeded. Yes. It means it doesn't have enough people on its side. No, 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 no. I mean, <laughs> that would be the logic. You see, <laughs> well, 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 if you interpret it that way, mm. no problem. Mm. But it will soon have enough people. <laughs> mm. uh, if they are not enough, they will, then the enough will come. Mm. The Bush war itself took five years, mm. you know, with uh, a lot of death, half a million people dead. Uh, so, the thing is, you know, popular support cannot be manufactured. And that's why, whether they want to show that there are people celebrating or not, you, hired people cannot celebrate as people who are celebrating mm. spontaneously. Okay. I, I'm afraid our time is out. Yes. We need to get mm. out of here. But two quick questions. Um, uh, Ivan, uh, let me ask you to... Mm. 
put the question in reference to the situation in uh, Kasesa and Bondivujo, mm -hmm. and if you could get a response from uh, Dr. Beseje, mm -hmm. you can give it the context that you need, and then also if you could comment on uh, the what next for the broad opposition, mm -hmm. uh, especially with the situation of uh, uh, Amama Mbabazi and the uh, recent return of China. Yes, if you could mm -hmm. just do that mm -hmm. in the next uh, mm -hmm. two minutes, yes, then we should be able to get out of here. In terms of what next for the, uh, the great opposition, um, I think. Again, like I said in the, in the previous segment, there is need for soul searching. In as much as there is every attempt by the state to unleash um, the power of the gun and uh, abuse the state um, apparatus uh, in Museveni's favor, I think the opposition also needs to do some house cleaning. Doctor essentially finds himself uh, doing a one-man struggle, so to speak. With a few people, you'll have people like Wafuro Gutu, you'll have people like Sam Junganda, people like Ingrid Tuna uh, around him. But there is detachment on uh, the other part of um, the opposition. DP, for example, is an anarchy. It's, it's, it's a crumbling house in terms of leadership. You know the Lukwago and uh, uh, Nobat Mao contestation. UPC, it's dead. Uh, come to CP, uh, Ken Luchamuzi is, is almost failing to lead the ship. Um, FDC itself faces grave, grave challenges. And I know some of those challenges, of course, might be manufactured by the state and instigated by the system, but also in terms of, um, because to be able to mobilize, to be able to translate that passion that doctor is describing into um, structures that can be able to lead. Into the enough. Enough, mm. yes. To, to be able to, you know, to crystallize them into a critical mass, you need to have the house in order. Okay. And I think the position in Uganda is in a leaking house, which is possibly one can conveniently add you, tell not tell able to withstand the storm for Dr. Kamsin, let me ask. Look, for me, I, I want uh, what next to approach from the other point. During the Pope's visit, you and uh, President Museveni had this handshake, and I could see a broad smile on you, and I don't know whether I smile, I didn't observe critical. Is it all lost? You have a history of struggling together. You all, to some extent, have some appreciation of the country's problems, maybe your solutions are different. Is it all lost? Is there no room for a civil discussion that may not again decide how to, instead of taking the country house back to where you found it when you, come to, when you came to power? Is yeah. it all lost? Yeah, no, I think yeah. um, I'll make a sort of brief attempt at answering, answering both. Yes. both. Mm -hmm. First, Please make no mistake, we don't have a multi-party political system here. We don't. The movement state, which was built from 1981, 1986 in the government up to 2006 formally, and the movement system that continued from 2000 and well, from, 19, from two, nine, 1986 to 2000, hmm? 1986 to 1996, mm. and from 1996 to 2006, what was called the movement system is still firmly in place. There is no multi-party political system. So we have the state and we have some non-state entities struggling to dislodge more or less the state. Mm. Now, that is the untenable state of affairs. So these parties cannot really be strong parties, cannot organize, cannot uh, build the kind of um, competencies that you are talking about. Therefore, we should refocus our attention that the struggle at hand is a democratization struggle to take power from this narrow control. People who control power here are a handful of people, a handful of warlords, to take power from there to the citizens. That is the struggle. So to that extent, we must all get together. It's not a partisan struggle. We must get together and democratize. For break down this narrow control to a popular control. Now, whether we can do that through a discussion is uh, the question of on appeal. I think, frankly, it's not uh, easy to 
for people to negotiate themselves out of power. And we have many cases to go by. What must happen is that the majority of the powerless Ugandans must force them out of power. What the negotiation should entail is the modalities of how they relinquish the power so that citizens regain their power. Mm. That modality can be discussed. And we have always been very open to that discussion. But that must be the discussion. Uh, and of course, as I have said, it is a discussion that has been very strongly resisted. So the, the people who have been calling for talks generally want talks about co-optation. Mm. How to bring you into, uh, to share the spoils. That is, a unity government, we also advocate, mm. if it is a unity transition, if it's within the context of a transition, mm. In fact, uh, again, what will happen next? If nothing emerges out of this, we shall form a national unity government ourselves mm. and proceed to... There was a list that was published in one of the newspapers. Was that Specu your cabinet Speculative. <laughs> but you're working on something like that. Oh, yeah. we, are, we, we shall provide leadership <laughs> for our people. <laughs> so Charles, don't lose yes. hope. We shall, <laughs> provide, <laughs> we shall <laughs> definitely provide leadership what, to what, our people. What's your outlook? But then? yes... It, is, it would be much cheaper, though, you know, just a romantic idea in the main. It would be much cheaper for the country if it was possible to have a negotiated transition so that, you know, the pull and push is minimized, uh, which leads to breaking of a few things. Mm, mm. And these, you know, some people are illusionary. They think that you can... Uh, you know, uh, get power, citizens can get power completely painlessly. That won't happen. Mm. No, no, no. In this struggle, there is pain. There is sacrifice. So, yes, some people will be injured. Those who come, you know, the young men, I saw some being beaten with batons yesterday uh, in town. Doing, who, they were just about four or five people walking around, you know, with the, with the they are pieces of paper. They were beaten and brutalized. Uh, so some people will get inconvenienced, some people will get hurt, some people will get... And this is what would be avoided if it was possible indeed that there is a conversation in a civilized manner on how to get the transition, and, 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 and not on anything yes. else. And, and I think there are those who think we, we, we we will not transition unless if you are not the one forcing the, 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 the transition. Let me ask one. That is again something <laughs> diversionary, because yes. we are not talking about transiting from him to me. Mm. Yeah. No. It's systems. We, we, yes, we, we, and I, I have, yeah. don't forget, even in, 19, in 2001, when I became a candidate for the first time, mm. I offered to give up the candidature, mm. provided the, that transition would take place. I'm not the issue here. I have never set out to look for leadership myself as a primary objective. Never. I have never been a class monitor. I've never been a prefect in school. I've never been in student politics. Never. What forced me to get into politics was abuse of my rights. And, and the, the people in, uh, uh, especially among us, some of your colleagues, who believe that uh, you now believe that you're the Messiah that would deliver the opposition and this country to that liberation. And that you're standing in the way of a genuine, I, I mean, the broadening of yeah. options from the yeah, opposition. But how would I stand in their way? I don't know. <laughs> I am <laughs> not even a leader of any organization, as it's, you know. Central doctor, that's the same argument he makes. He says, if uh, I wasn't wanted, then Arim Hukas wouldn't be pushing No, but in this way, case, he's the chairman of NRM. Mm. I am not. I'm not the chairman of FDC. But you're the de facto president of FDC. No, I'm not. The FDC has a president. It has yeah, a president. I, I, use and the word de facto. And no, he's, I don't sit mm. in any of their meetings. Mm. But you wield a lot of control and influence. How? <laughs> <laughs> Decisions are mm. taken in meetings. D don't you? Of NEC, <laughs> of uh, National Council, and so on. I'm not a member of any of those. Mm. Well, I think to put, so to put I'm it I'm not in the decision to making. Put it, uh, assuming nothing happens before 2021, would you still be? A candidate 2021. That will answer no, the question no, 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 whether no, no, you're no. actually not interested in the no, 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 power no, no, for no. yourself. For you are again, and mm -hmm. I get frustrated because <laughs> we don't really take the fundamental point that this struggle we are in 
is not about choosing a leader. It's about regaining power for the citizens of this country. I think that's answered. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 you know, uh, I, I, I intend, you know, I've spent my entire adulthood in this struggle. I gave up my profession, everything. I'm not about to say I give up and live under a dictatorship. I will struggle in whatever way I can. I don't have to be a leader of anything, but I will continue to struggle until we can live in a country that is properly managed, whose citizens are in charge, who have rights, and who have an accountable government. We are, stretch, we are stretching yeah. the show and we need to get out of here, but Museven argues and says, I have been in the struggle for 50 years. I'm not about to give it up to, mm. uh, what does he call, uh, what does he call <laughs> it? The wolves. wolves. Yeah, yeah, but, but as I have said, mm. I am not in control of anybody. Okay. I'm just uh, a soul who is now yeah, in I, my I am village. Making the, I'm making the producers very uncomfortable, but just one last question. Uh, <laughs> what do you think is behind uh, the developments in especially Kasese and Bundewuju? Kasese being the center and the fact that you and the FDC won in Kasese overwhelmingly. Well, that is a large question, I think, that can only be answered in the dying uh, seconds of this program. But uh, I think fundamentally it is intended to break down the will of the people of that mountain. Those mountain people are possibly the most liberated individuals we have in this country. And they have earned their, you know, their, their confidence and power through struggle. They declared their independence before Uganda became independent in June 1960. They declared the independence of the Rwenzururu and, and put a king, a king of the, their own king and struggled until the king is now there. And uh, any dictatorship is worried about a strong community. That's why even the other kingdoms mm -hmm. will continue being, uh, try, they try to divide them, dismember them and so on. That is a response of any dictatorship. So Thank you. I think the intention is simply to weaken the people of the Rwenzururu and uh, to, 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 to subject them. Especially yeah. after the Thank you very much. Our time is out. We need to get out of here. And of course, we can't end without uh, uh, saying happy birthday to the Kabak of Buganda because uh, it was his birthday. Maybe in, if you want to deliver a message yourself and uh, the gentleman in the studio so that we can get out of here. Yes, I'm extremely honored to be born in the same month as the Kabaka of Buganda. And so my hearty congratulations and uh, best wishes to Sarasadja Magurunyondo Nanta B. Pingwa. You should have also uh, shared a congratulatory <laughs> message <laughs> for uh, someone called Anselm, uh, who won as president of the debating club, uh, I think somewhere in Oxford. Yes, yes. Actually, no, I, I, I've been seeing, yeah, somehow, I've been seeing on the social media that it's at Oxford. No, it's not at Oxford. Mm. Anselm is in short in the U.S. Okay, in yeah. short in the U.S. Mm. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen. Thank you very much, Dr. Kiza Bessier, for making time for the show. Thank you. At least finally, they should. We, 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 we know your, <laughs> your, 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 your escort <laughs> is, is <laughs> out there uh, waiting for you. <laughs> yes. uh, we hope that you'll be able to get back home uh, safely. Thank you very much, uh, Ona. Thank you very much, uh, Ivan. Thank you very much to you all, our viewers, for joining us tonight. And apologies that we're not able to take, to, to have you call in uh, into this show tonight. Have a good night. Thank you.